I press record over to you, Alex. Well, thank you very much, Officer Dibble. And aren't you the consumer professional as ever asking if people would like to, would be uh, OK with being recorded? Does things by the book, Officer Dibble. That's why he throws the book at you and you back <laughs> up as well. OK, so now I haven't lined up any jokes or anything because, Steve, uh, I was just going to tell you a little story about how I met Steve, actually. Ah, every... Uh, Okay, Dean, right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, right. Well, um, I, every, every Thursday morning at half past seven, I get up bright and early and join a lovely group of people who all just meet together and talk about what they're doing once a week. And a lovely lady there called Jo said, oh, Alex, I met the most fascinating person the other week. He's a man called Steve and he works doing bug hotels, bug homes. He's a very interesting guy and he knows all about insects and how to create environments for insects to thrive. And just at the very same time, Sarah, lovely Sarah Fishburne and the Martin House gang were putting together their bug house module. And I thought, wow, what an opportunity. So we invite, I had a little chat with Steve, found out where he lives down there in the West Midlands, not far from Starbridge, is that right? Yeah, down in Wolverhampton. There we yeah, go. Yeah, Wolverhampton. So, Wolverhampton. <laughs> right. Don't you start? Oh, I wouldn't dream of it, Lord. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we had a little chat, and Steve very kindly agreed to come along and uh, present what he does, because he's got a, a, I would call it a lifestyle business. Is that fair, do you think, Steve? It's kind of a something you love to do. This is a, yeah, it's like a hobby business. This is alongside what I do for a day job. So my day job is coaching. Uh, mentoring, training, that kind of thing. And this is a, a hobby, really, that I do to help me to relax. You know, people actually do yoga and different things. Well, I like to do this. I like to make things out of scrap wood. So this is my, this is my hobby and my sort of So you mean like coaching? Place. You mean coaching for football then? No, not coaching for football. Coaching more, helping people to think differently about their situation. Okay. Okay. Well, that's not today, though. <laughs> Before that can be another time. That can be another time. That's not today. It's lovely that we're talking about relaxing because that's I needed to calm down at the weekend because I went I went to the fishmonger and I bought some monkfish. Oh, monkfish. But you know, cheeky, cheeky blighted didn't even say thank you. <laughs> I, bought, I bought some monkfish. Steve, take it away, baby! <laughs> how, how big is okay. a monkfish? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna share my screen now. Hopefully it will allow me to. Okay, so can you what can you see? Homes for bugs. You can see yeah, homes for bugs. bugs. Fabulous. What a good start. Okay, so this is this is us. My hobby is Homes for Bugs. And our idea is that we will build a happier, healthier, and more connected world by building one bug house at a time. And that is because we have conversations when we do things as well. We don't just and then sell it. We get together with people. We have conversations like this with lots of people. And we help people to understand a bit more about um, why it's important for the environment, why it's important for bugs, and why it's important for people to come together to do things um, and also to do things, like I said, just as a hobby, to help you relax and to help you feel happy. Mm -hmm. So that's us in a very quick nutshell. Steve. Hello. Did you know for, um, for um, having like bugs, we need more Buddleia because um, butterflies love Buddleia. Well, you can because... be my plant expert. Is, that, is it it's... Naomi? Yeah, it's Naomi. Yeah. You can be because, my plant expert, Naomi, because I'm not a plant expert. You can, you can be my, you can be my is wing man. Buddleia is a purple flower and it attracts butterflies because it's got a nice smelling scent and the butterflies go onto it. It's true. They do, butterflies and bees, but seem to like purple. Seem to like yeah. a lot. Yeah. So what I'm going to do now is just tell you my story a little bit, with some pictures. So... You can see on the screen there, it started with a rusty saw. So that, that orange handled saw there is all I had in my shed with a couple of old nails um, and a, a screwdriver. That was all I had. And I saw a bug house in a garden centre 
thought that's a bit rubbish. It's a bit light, doesn't really do anything. So I said to my wife, I can make one of those. And as she normally does, she rolled her eyes at me and thought, oh, here we go again. <laughs> I, went home, I made a book house with the rusty saw and some old wood. So we use old wood. We never buy any wood. There's lots of wood that you can find in, in skips, um, on people's gardens, old fences, old um, pallets. We've even used a cricket bat to make something before. You know, use any bit of wood because bugs don't want clean. They don't care about clean. They want something that's a bit mucky, maybe a bit, maybe a bit um, rotten as well. Sometimes, some with different holes in, like nail holes and things like that. So we don't, we don't want perfection. We say to people, if you want perfection, you've come to the wrong place. This is about making something that people can reuse. They can understand um, the importance of recycling, and it gives bugs somewhere that they really want to live. So we use some, we use rescued materials all the time. And this was the first ever bug house that we built. So that was some old wood, and then you can see some pine cones at the top there. We've got some bamboo that grows in our garden, so we cut the bamboo down, and um, just twigs um, shoved in so that the bugs can climb in there, so ladybirds and maybe um, beetles and spiders can get into those, and then obviously solitary bees can go into the, um, into the holes. Now we'll talk a bit more about solitary bees in a minute. Um, I'm just going to show you a few more pictures of some of the things that we've made. So that was our first one. We Put that onto Facebook, and if you've got Facebook, and one of our friends was like, "Oh, I like that. How much do you want to want to sell that for?" So we sold that one, and then we sold about three more. And then, if you saw in the picture before, we then bought a nice shiny saw, big saw that's electric, so I haven't got to use my muscles anymore. And the rusty saw is still in the shed, still there, pride of place. That'll, yeah. There, that was four, about nearly four years ago. So since then, we've done different styles. Wow. So Tudor style. Anybody knows like the Tudor, like the Great Fire of London, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Tudor style bug houses. We've done haunted houses. <laughs> you see, just with a little bit of an imagination, how you can make them a little bit different. Um, Balamori. Anybody know Balamori? Yeah, I used to watch that as a kid. That's the one. <laughs> well, Alex on, Alex. <laughs> so we do colourful ones, just using some um, nice garden paint that obviously is dog friendly and animal friendly. Um, we've got some, so if we find, whatever we find, we use. So with these ones, they were like, they're perspex, like see-through plastic. So wow. Perspex on the front of it, so you can actually see inside. So when ladybirds or lacewings or spiders, or whatever, go in there, you can have a little look inside and see what's happening. So we made a few of those. We make them with planters on the side. So, so they've they, got their own little garden. Exactly. So you can plant your favourite plants in there and then you can, the bugs will come to the plants. And then as you can see on this one, we'll talk a little bit more about it in a bit, but you can see that on the black part, holes have been filled in. So solitary bees have made their nest in there, which we'll talk about properly in a bit. So you can see there that they've come to the flowers, they've liked it there, and then they've gone and built their nest. So the next year when they come out, they can then pollinate some more flowers and hopefully stay around and live in that garden for a long time. Wow. We do fairy bug houses. That's, so, that's cute. Yeah, so we do fairy gardens as well. So it's just showing you that no matter what, whatever your imagination is, you can make a bug house to fit that imagination. So these are Christmas ones where we've got a little Santa at the bottom there, if you can see, and a Christmas tree. Yeah. Um, butterfly houses, you mentioned butterflies earlier, Naomi, so we make butterfly yeah. houses. Now these have got long slits down the middle um, and across inside that you can't see, there's a, um, a twig that goes across. So yeah. you can go in there and they just rest, they hang from the twig and they just rest in there if the weather's not very, not very good or if they want to just chill out for 10 minutes. So they go into those book houses there, the butterfly houses. So as you can see, you can use anything to build a book house. This is one that we used. There was an old, an old set of drawers, um, and you can see on the top that's the drawer handle. Well, we cut it up. I cut it up. Wow. This little bug house, a bit, bit rough, a bit ready, but you know what? It's, it looks great, and bugs love it. So whatever you've got lying around, you can build a bug house out of. Well, you know what, Steve? I'm just going to share you a little video. Yes, go on, Naomi. You should actually make um, a hedgehog house as well. Well, it's funny you should say that, Naomi. I do make hedgehog houses. Cool. <laughs> bird feeders and they make lots of different things but yeah hedgehog houses not so much now it's a little bit late but and um, sort of yeah 
September, October time, a lot of people like hedgehog houses. Uh, yeah. Make quite a few of those. Yeah, they're really good, really good. Because we, we need to look after them, don't we? Yeah, we do. Okay, so you might have seen, I'm not sure if you've seen this video, but I made this video and it's on our website. Well, so I don't think I've seen it. I'm going to play this for you now. And this, all the stuff that I've shown you so far, the things that we would, but not everybody's got a lot of wood or not everybody's got a saw to make things with. So this video might give you some ideas of what else you can use. So I made this right at the very start of lockdown. Okay, so what did you think of that? Really good. And what, what, what could you use around the house then to make some um, book hotels? Um, Pringle boxes or Pringle tubes. Pringle tubes, um, yeah. You could use um, like empty um, drink bottles. Yeah. Um, you could use um, uh, a shoebox. Yeah. You could. You could use a shoebox, definitely. Definitely. Egg. Sorry. I said, my um, my question. I could have you. I want to use um, next time you build um, a thing for the upset. I want to build um. Some wood, some nails, and some walls, pieces of rotten wood. Yeah, yeah. And the, 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 I think the whole thing about this is you can use absolutely anything you want to, whatever you've got lying around, whether it's a box. Right, yeah, I remember. Okay, yeah. that's good. That's a good one. What was that one, Gemma? I said that's a good one. That's a good for next time I go out in the country, but I can see what the books. I've seen them too. Yeah. And, and as well, don't forget, you don't have to actually build anything. So some bugs like to live um, on, on the ground. So if you just got some old logs and you also yeah. just want to pile it all up, then lots I of think. that as well. You don't have to build the structure. Right. Okay, then. So do you remember, oh. last time, I don't know if you remember last time that I came and I asked how many types of different types of bees there are do you remember yes yeah, yes so what what do you think what's your answer my answer um, is bees uh, i've seen honeybees working big the queen big yeah there's um there's bumblebee honeybee yeah uh simply bee <laughs> I think I'm going. Come on, Alex, Alex is really straining. So come on, Alex, what do you think? Pick me. Pick me. What? I think there are over 200 different types of bee in the UK, Steve. 
There yeah. certainly are. Bees. There is Giraffe. one type of one type of honeybee, about 25 types of bumblebee, and then about 225 types of solitary bee. Solitary bee, bee egg. So, so people just think that there's about the honeybee, but there's so yeah, many. Like, bees. So bees. 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 just like to be on their own. <laughs> so the just like that's a question that's coming up, Alex. You've spoiled it now. You just ruined it for me. <laughs> I'm really joking. Yeah, I'm, I'm, really I'm, nervous, <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Sorry. <laughs> okay, okay so yeah, honeybees. Bees. Honeybees are probably the one that everybody yeah. thinks that they see when they honey see bees. bees all the time. Yeah, I'm, I'm nervous with bees. I'm nervous because they don't eat bees anywhere because they, I know they can make honey for us, but I don't eat bees anywhere. I hate them. Right, okay, so honeybees, yeah, well, honeybees are probably the ones that if any bee will sting you, it's probably going to be a honeybee because they are yeah, protecting their, their hive, they are protecting their queen, they're protecting all the food that they're yeah, making. They take the food. Some, haven't, some haven't even got a sting. Some bees haven't got a sting, and if they have got it, they don't use it, they don't, they don't, it's not strong enough a lot of the time. Yeah, I don't like bees. You. So... Bumblebees, like we said, there are 25 oh, different types. So here are just some. Tailed. So the red tailed, imaginatively named, and the white tailed, and buff tailed, and the common card, and there's lots of other bees. There's a tree bumblebee, which has got. How? It's quite red, the tree bumblebee is, and they nest in, he, uh, in bird boxes sometimes. So you might yeah. see some of those. Tailed bee. I've never seen a buff tailed and the bumblebee. Yeah. So there's like, I mean, there's so many different types. There's some information that I can send over to Alex, I think, if he wants me to, to, to share, um, like, big charts that you can see where different types of bees. Yes, yeah, I've, 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 I've never, ever, I've never, ever, ever saw a buff-tailed bumblebee. Well, if you look closely, you might. Sometimes we just see a bee go past and we just think it's a bumblebee. Yeah, don't they? Bumblebee, that's fed. Can I ask yeah. a nerdy question, please, Dave? You can. <laughs> Um, do they just live in certain parts of the country or do they live everywhere all around? There's certain bees live in certain parts of the country. So there's some bees that you will only see in the south of England, some bees that you'll only see on like, like heather, some bees that you'll only see in maybe Scotland. So there's, there's bees that, there's common ones that live. So the common card are the red tails, the buff tails, the white tails. And I think there's the early bumblebee and the tree bumblebee. Are the seg. seven big types of bumblebee that you will find in most places but there's so many different kinds that they will find their own environments where they feel happier so they, not they, all... sorry carry on yes sorry go on no you carry on oh sorry i thought you, well, I thought you... Better, Phil. we can't we couldn't see your face earlier well that's a bonus for most people well, the only point i was going to make was you don't tend to see them near motorways they they usually stick to the b roads <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, yeah. that I'll have that for my next presentation. <laughs> That's a yeah, joke, have... Officer, um, Officer Dibble. Oh, thank you, Naomi. You can have that one for free, Steve. Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay, so who can tell me, apart from Alex, what, what solitary means? What does solitary mean when we say solitary be? Uh, solitary me, uh, I don't know. Oh, solitary could, solitary could that, um, solitary means that it could be that, that they're on their own. That's it. Well done. Oh, yes. Well solitary done. Good. On, its own. on its own. So when we think about honeybees, they live in a big hive, don't they? They live in their big... Yeah, solitary bees live on their own. Bee leg. So solitary bees don't live in a hive. Well, actually, some solitary bees will, 70%, um, so three quarters of the solitary bees would live underground. So there's That's different good. called mining bees. So they'll go under the ground, they'll make their holes under the ground, they'll lay their eggs under there. Um, but the ones that we build bee hotels for, um, there's three main types, really, that live in the types of hotels. Hotels. So can you remember from last time what they were? I have to repeat what everyone's saying, I'd be Gemma. amazed if you can remember. Um, oh. bees, queen bees. So, I show you. So we've got the red mason, red bees. the leaf cutter bee, red mason bee, wood cutter bee, cutter bee, wool cutter bee, 
Royal Cardiff Bay, that's right. So they're the three three main sites that live in the bee hotels that we make. So if you think with bamboo or if you have some help and you drill some holes into, into some wood. Yeah, of course. Bees. So the red mason bee, there's a picture of it in the corner. Wow, you lay, they lay up to 40 wow. eggs. See in the bottom corner where they've got eggs, see that little, the little bees, baby bees are there. They've, they've built walls in between. So in the tube, I've got a model to show you in a bit, but in the tube, what they'll do, actually, should you see a model, you want to see a model now? I'll mess my presentation up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, of course. Thank yeah. you. Always have to repeat everything. Oh, can you see? Oh, wow. It's like a bazooka. That's amazing. <laughs> well, what a bee, ho a bee hotel would look like from the inside. So depending on what bees we've got, we've got different types of things. So let's say this is the red mason bee that you can see on the screen now. So they build their um, chambers with mud. So they need mud close to where they live. So if we take the top off, what we can see inside, can you see that? Yeah. What they'll do, they'll go right to the very back of the chamber and they'll build a little, as you can see on the screen, like a little chamber and they'll build it, um, walls made of mud in between. So they'll take a little bit of nectar, a little bit of pollen, and then they'll lay their egg and then they'll build a wall and then they'll build another wall and then build another wall until they built as many as they can fit into the tube. And then at the end, you will see it covered in mud at the end. So as you see on the screen there, see the little bee just poking his head out. Yeah is obviously she's built all of her chambers all the way through um, and they're just sealing up at the end there. Actually that bee is just being born, that bee is just coming out. Um, so in the springtime when they come out, they're fully grown. They're in there for nearly a year. So how, 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 big, like how big can a queen bee get then? There's no queen bees in solitary bees. There's just male bees and female bees. So the female bees, the lady bees obviously lay the eggs. Um, but there's no queens because a queen uh, in the hive is the one that lays all the eggs. Okay. Honey bee. But, no, but I'm, I'm just asking thing. how can, how big can a queen bee get? I don't know, to be honest. I'm not going to, I'm not going to fib. I don't know. I don't think they get that big. <laughs> so can they just get that big then? I think the biggest recorded is about the size of a, 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 a double bed. <laughs> ha ha ha! Very funny, Alex. Queen size. Oh, <laughs> oh my! Is another one from my, another one from presentation. <laughs> Did, does anyone ever remember watching Prisoner Cell Block H? What? You used to bring me frozen. Prisoner Cell Block H. One of, the, no. one, of the, one of the characters in there was called Queen Bee. She was about 16 oh, stone. Ha ha ha, very funny. It's cool like to watch Prisoner Cell Block H. <laughs> you know, I never thought that would be part of the conversation today. <laughs> uh, we like to take it left field. You really certainly do. <laughs> okay, so we've talked about red mason bees a little bit who use mud to build their chambers. Cut a bee. Cut a bees, surprisingly cut leaves to build their chambers. And you can see at the bottom there, with the green leaves at the end, you can see the same thing, they do the same. They build a chamber, they, they, but they, what they do is put um, leaves into, the, into the, the tube, into the chamber, and make like, see in the corner, it looks like a cigar shape. So they make like a proper cocoon with it all. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's where the, the bee um, lays their egg, and then they eat the pollen and the nectar, um, and then they stay in there until they're ready to come out as adults. And then they come out. And I don't know if this is a really interesting fact, I think, that they always lay their female bees first. So the female bees are always at the back of the nest. So the males always hatch first. The males climb out, hatch first, have some food, and then hang around outside waiting uh -huh. for the to come out. So, a bit like Saturday night in town. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so, so it's really, I, didn't, I found that incredible that they, they, they know they can lay their eggs that way around. So they know that the males can come out first and then just wait to, to mate with the females. Um, but yeah, so leaf cutters, if you, so if you've got any, I don't know, roses are one of their favourites, I think. So if you've got any roses or any other plants and you see a perfect circle cut out, you've probably got leaf cutter bees somewhere close by. Um, 
And then wool carder bees, they use like fine hair. So I've got a picture there of lamb's ear. I'm not sure if anybody, I don't know what the real name for that is, but it's got all those little tiny fine hairs on and they gather those hairs and they do the same thing as the, as the red mason and the leaf cutter. They build all the chambers, they put the pollen, the nectar, lay the egg, build the chambers all the way across, all the way to the end. And if you end up with something like the picture there, it looks like cotton wool. Then you've got wool carder bees nesting in your in your bee hotel. So, talked a little bit about honeybees. Um, obviously, living in a big family, if you like, living in the hive, and they take. You can see the, the nectar and the pollen on their legs. There, they, they've got sacks on their legs. Does, they does the honeybee have queen bee then? Yeah. Yeah, honeybee has a queen bee. Um. um so you can see all the pollen and nectar in a sack there hanging down. And I think sometimes that can weigh up to like 30% of the body weight of the actual bee. So they take a lot of pollen and nectar away from the flowers and back to the hive to feed all the other bees in there. And the difference there, a solitary bee, as you can see there, hasn't got sacks. It just crawls over all the plants, gets covered in pollen, gets pot covered in nectar, and it takes what it needs, so it only eats what it needs, and it only takes a little bit back to its nest to, to put in with the egg, so that the egg's got enough food to live on. So um, solitary bees, particularly red mason bees, are 125 times better pollinators mm. than honey bees. So for every one apple, let's say, is created by a honey bee pollinating, 125 apples will be created by solitary bees, by red mason bees. So when people talk about save the bee, yes, we should look at the honeybee, but actually we should be concentrating a lot of our time on solitary bees because they have a job and nobody really knows much about them. Okay, the back there. You said to nod in, it must be a good, good start. Uh, well, and it's just interesting because we have just finished a module on the journey of an apple and we were talking a lot about pollination for apples. Yeah. And uh, obviously how apple blossom gets pollinated. Uh, so, yeah, no, that was just very interesting. And the red mason bee is the, is the one for the orchards, really. The mm. people can, you can actually buy, if you wanted to, you can buy the tubes with the red mason bee, sort of bees ready to go, if you like. Um, mm. Farmers do. A lot of people farm them because they're such good pollinators, especially, mm. like, say, for orchards. So, um, yeah, so... Who can remember what a red mason bee uses to build their egg chamber with? If I give you, if I show you the model again. So the red mason bee would be that one at the top. Who can remember? It would be the cotton wool one. Try again. Uh, the leaf cutter. Try again. <laughs> oh! The red mason bee, um, I don't know if you, if you know, but if you think about the word mason and masonry, it's like brick. So think about brick and mud. Yeah. That'll help you remember. So mason, wood, mason, brick, mud. Yeah, that colour. Okay, so what do leaf cutter bees use? Um... Go Naomi, you can do it. Leaves. Yes. Well done. <laughs> and then last but not least, what do the wool carder bees use? Wool. The wool, yeah. So the fine hairs off those plants, like the really fine hairs that they use. It looks like wool when they finish with it. So yeah. Okay, so who did the puzzles? Uh I didn't have that. I didn't have these ones. Oh, okay. No problem. No problem. I think Alex has got some of these, so we can send them out and people can do them if they, if they mm. have already. That's fine. It's fine. Yes, yes. I think Officer Dibble and I will need to have a conversation, but we'll do that offline. <laughs> and, we'll, and we'll flick past this slide as well then. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So that's it from me. Oh, that's not it. Some current slide. Okay. So any questions from anybody? Do you want to stop sharing so that we can go back onto full screen? Is that okay? Yeah, of course. Get off my screen. 
Um, where's my option to stop sharing? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, it's usually at the top stop, where it says view options. Yeah. Uh, you click on view options. Uh, oh, he's, oh, I've got to take my video off. Yeah, um, it looks like Steve, it's always like when I went out with one bed, I've got, I think, um, two rug hotels. I think go. two, one of them by the woods, right, and one was um, near the car park. So I think two, two rug hotels. Oh, oh okay. Good. Have I stopped sharing now? Has that stopped? You have, yeah. yes. Yeah, yes. it was, um, okay. it was a couple of times, it was, it was a couple of weeks ago, I don't know where it was, but it was two ho hotel rugs. Two big, big, big logs. Two big ones. Yes. Um, it was near where my mum that I've ever heard of um, in a big hotel. I can't remember where it was now. It was from my new place on. That's where it was. Steve, what's the biggest bug hotel you've ever made? The biggest one? I don't make them that big. I don't do the community. Oh, actually, I made... Um, a big hotel that was made up of lots of little hotels, if that makes sense. Wow. Yeah. Done workshops um, with, um, there were some children actually at a nature reserve and they all came along and they took a little box each, filled yeah. their names onto it. And they built a hotel with, I think it had oh, sir. 16 or 18 rooms. I can't remember now. So yeah. in size hotel. Um, I've, not, I've not done one of the ones, you know, the pallets where people build. Oh, that's them. good. I've not done one of those yet. So but. when would be, I mean, obviously any time of year is okay, but I'm guessing, because I'm thinking about some of our communities where we do have um, either orchards or we do have sort of, you know, natural habitats where these would be really good. And I just tried to think, because we've got a couple of places, well, we've got more than that. We've got some places where they do have estate management teams or woodcraft teams. And I know specifically they'd really be interested in, in building some bespoke things um but they probably don't you know because over winter they don't tend to do too much outdoors it tends but actually building them indoors is probably the best time it's probably you know doing it over the winter is probably a good time to do it really isn't it definitely because um if i just go back to these oh, oh actually so you can't see them um red mason bees they come out sort of march time march oh yes and end of march at the beginning of april time so if you've got the, the bee hotels in place with the with the flowers that will attract some whatever that I'll have the town go out orchards or wherever as well when the blossoms there. Great, Mom. Once once they come out in March time, they want to mate and nest quite quickly. Hmm. So they are hmm. they're not they're not out and about for long. So they're out from about April, May, June, July at the most, and a little bit later. Um, but yeah, so if you can get stuff built indoors, if hmm. you can. And what I would say as well, I mean, there's a big thing around these big community um, bug hotels where they use pallets and put all the different... Yeah, of course. They're, they're great, but from a, a parasite point of view, they're not the best for actually for bees to live in or for other bugs actually to live in a lot of the time. You have a lot of... What, what would be better would be small... Lots of... If that makes sense. Ah. So 